is our last list of October, which means we're morally and contractually obligated to drop everything we're doing and focus on horror. It's just the law. And because we are good, upstanding citizens here at Cinefix, here are our picks for the top five horror films of all time. Top five horror films. Let's see. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Alien, Silence of the Lambs, The Shining, and Psycho. Throw in The Exorcist, Halloween, Night of the Living Dead, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, and An American Werewolf in London as some honorable mentions, and you've got yourself a list. Woo! There you have it. Not our toughest list, I gotta say. It's actually pretty fascinating. Horror as a genre has an abnormally strong center. These staples seem almost inarguable. You look at them and you say, well, that's just about right. Couldn't replace any of those, because the classics here are almost classicer than usual. So, to try and fill a list with anything else, we'd either have to be willfully dishonest about the classics not being the best, or spend 10 minutes of your time rehashing tired praise. So instead of doing either of those, we're going to stand by those classics as the best of the best, but spend the rest of our time giving you an alternative universe top 5 horror film list, where we pretend the entire classic canon of horror never existed, and we get to rewrite it with lesser known films. Ready? Here we go. First up, we've got to re-establish the slasher film in our brave new world. There's no more Freddy, no more Jason, no more Leatherface, but somebody's got to murder all these sex-having teens. But who will step in to fill their murderous shoes? Maybe the masked man of 1979's Tourist Trap? Or the vengeful Mr. Cropsey of The Burning? Ooh, maybe Bob Clark's genre-defining just below the cusp of classic Black Christmas? No, with the slasher film so suddenly gone, we have an opportunity to rewrite the classics with a well-deserving substitute. The Giallo film, the stylish Italian slasher analog that birthed the genre. And while we can't pick Suspiria, because that's surely far too canon to exist in our new universe, we can pick the very worthwhile Blood and Black Lace. As early as 1964, Blood and Black Lace was doing something frighteningly similar to what was called revolutionary in the 70s and 80s with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Friday the 13th, and Halloween. It's a brilliantly confounding collision of the hyper-colorful, high-art beauty of fashion with the deep, shadowy, low-brow depravity of murder as essential an Italian giallo film as there ever was. A complicated story of the masked murder of scantily clad fashion models in an Italian fashion house, the precocious camera work is an eerie predictor of scares to come. It's twists and turns of the plot tropes we've grown used to seeing, and its focus on the brutality of the act of killing itself the perfect predictor for every slasher film to come, in a way that makes this an instant classic. With Alien out of the picture, we need a sci-fi horror film that will take its time to slow burn scare the hell out of us. And it's not gonna be the thing. Lord knows we lost that one in the metaphorical fire. Same with Invasion of the Body Snatchers. But beyond that, Alien gets hard to replace. If In Horizon gets the scares in space right, and Sunshine absolutely nails the desolate tone, Cube feels like it should get more attention in this universe, although that's a more apt replacement for Saw than Alien. And even though Under the Skin has very little in common beyond an extraterrestrial origin, we hope it gets some play in this terrifying new world. No, if we had to replace Alien in the echelons of horror, we actually think The Descent is the only film that can do it. the fact that The Descent takes place in pretty much the opposite location as outer space, it bears a striking resemblance to Alien. A group of explorers find themselves out of reach of rescue and trapped in an enclosed location with an unknown, hyper-violent creature, and they're whittled down to one in search of survival. The scares are claustrophobic, the environment is just as harsh as the monster, there are smart character dynamics, there are moral quandaries, there are lies amidst the living. Both even have utterly captivating sequences staged around a single source of light, and it's damn good. The Descent is smart and well shot and ever so scary, filling a niche for things that go bump in the night from the world beyond, and a more than venerable enough classic filling some very big shoes. 
In the absence of Silence of the Lambs, we're forced to promote up a serial killer horror from the less seen ranks. Something chilling, something psychologically complex, something that shows us what it's like to look into the eyes of a bad, bad man. Initial candidates for the role might be Frailty of the early aughts, or the more recent I Saw the Devil out of Korea, or maybe even Frenzy. However, for this slot, our choice is clear. Without silence to contend with, Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer is probably the scariest movie of its kind. Gone here is the confusingly hypnotic charisma of Anthony Hopkins' Hannibal Lecter, replaced instead by the cold, sadistic, and utterly genuine hateful glare of Michael Rooker. It is terrifying, to be sure, to the extent that it is the experience of coming face to face with true evil in a way that is rarely presented so thoroughly and yet simultaneously so believably. It is not enjoyable in any real sense. It is a harrowing experience with violence presented not as fun spectacle or set piece, but abruptly and unflinchingly. But that is where the real fear is, in a confrontation with the kind of person who might just really up and kill you. Next up, we're replacing the irreplaceable likes of The Shining. And yes, we're very, very sad about it. But how do you replace something as utterly unique as the virtuoso atmospheric horror of Kubrick's Is It or Isn't It a Ghost Story masterpiece? You might first look at the Polanski-directed Repulsion, or The Tenant, to see if they've survived the culling. They're certainly on the cusp. Next, you might consider a more recent Spanish entry, The Orphanage, for a terrifying mood piece that never really succumbs to cheap scares or definitive answers. However, gun to our heads, our nominee here is gonna have to be the innocence. Flora. Flora. The Innocence is a loose adaptation of James's The Turn of the Screw, and a brilliant one at that, full to the brim with the same kind of gradually accumulating sense of the uncanny that culminated into an oppressive climax in The Shining, The Innocence replaces the Art Deco carpeted overlook with the more traditionally gothic, and then piles on the creeps. It follows a new governess as her two young charges begin to misbehave in the strangest of ways, and as the unusual occurrences stack up, she becomes sure that they've been possessed by ghosts. But have they? The only person who ever sees them is her. Are the ghosts the threat, or is the governess? The innocence never allows us to detangle supernatural from delusion, which is why it gives us the exact same kind of the creeps as The Shining. Last, but certainly not least, we've got to fill the hole in the horror genre that might be left by a sudden vanishing of Hitchcock's psychological horror masterpiece, Psycho. In its place, we might recommend Psycho 2, which would cease to pale in comparison and get an opportunity to finally shine on its own merits, despite what would become a very confusing title. Or The Bad Seed, which takes the dysfunctional parent-child relationship in an equally terrifying direction. However, for this slot, we think Peeping Tom could be the new classic we're all looking for. Do you know what the most frightening thing in the world is? It's fear. So I did something very simple. Very simple. Peeping Tom is pretty much the perfect psycho surrogate. A mild-mannered young man who turns out to be the serial killer? Check. An oddly Freudian focus on sexual spectatorship? Check. Deeply disturbing parental backstory? Also check. Hell, they even had the exact same year of release, but it was initially panned as controversial and perverse, which prevented it from achieving the ubiquity that it probably deserves. But it is complex, perceptive, and brilliantly made, turning its lens on the audience in the same way the serial killer does his victims. And it's also terrifying, which is why we think it's one of the best horror films of all time. On a slightly different timeline, in an alternate universe where the really the best ones don't exist anymore. We covered that up front. I think we're done. So what do you guys think? Disagree with any of our alternate picks? Disagree with any of our original picks? Because, whew, you guys are a tough crowd. Let us know in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to Cinefix for more movie lists.